Yeah. What's going on, words? The big homie Will Power matches on the porch with DGB. We got Will Power off the porch with us today. How you feeling today, man? Man, you know I'm blessed to be here, man. I love it every time I'm coming here. It's a special occasion. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Appreciate you coming here, man. Sure. And, uh, you're a Atlanta native. What part of the city are you from? Mechanicsville. I was born in South Georgia, though, but I really was raised in Mechanicsville since like 19 years old. So that's really what okay. I call home. Yeah, yeah. And how has that area changed since you were younger? You know, you're trying to buy it up and make it, make it nice, but it's still the same thing. You're going to tear something down. Hmm. rebuild brand new apartments. You can't get nobody to move in because they know what the, the area represents. <laughs> and the same people move back in there. We just got nicer spots to live now. <laughs> yeah, that's so. for real. Yeah, it seems like a never-ended process that what they're trying to do. Oh, yeah, you no, know, for sure. Yeah. And uh, so before you became an artist yourself, uh, you started off as songwriting. Oh, yeah. So uh, how long have you been songwriting? What did you enjoy about it at first? Um, songwriting allowed me the ability to really, like, learn what works without having all the pressure on you. Oh yeah. Like I can get a record to someone else, it don't work, it just don't work. Yeah. And if it do work, it do work. But then I can figure out what works and continue to do it over and over and over again as far as my own personal process when I became an artist myself. Yeah. So basically I just got to be able to try different things to different people hmm. to see what work. But I've been writing since I was about 15. Okay. I'm 15, I was on the road with like Gorilla Zoe and different artists like that. Uh -huh. So, you know, yeah. started real young. Yeah. Who were some of your early musical influences? Who were you listening to? Oh um, man, I was listening to like Bobby Womack. Huh. Uh, you know, he's he's one of the greats to me. Um, Buster Rhymes is crazy. Mm. Like his diversity. Oh yeah, he could speed it up, he could he slow it down. Up, slow it down, any record, R&B, like yep. his diversity really was it. And he stood alone, he, he didn't have like a pack or a click with him, it was just him when you see him. Mm. Like, like, like of course he got his team, but it's like, as far as the music, he wasn't the, I'm a heavy feature, yeah. Like, you know, you look at Wayne when they was coming out early in and Cameron and all of them had these different records. They were all collabing together. It was just busted. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy yeah. to see that though. Yeah. How you progress from there. Yeah. Do you remember one of the first songs you wrote for somebody else? Oh uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, that, that, that was back during my NDA period, but. <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, but I definitely remember them songs early on. Yeah. Like, you know, as, as far as like mainstream, um, really like that whole Zoe, you know, Young LA, that whole little era, like who was a part of it, who played a major role in it. Yeah. Back when London on the track was working with them savages, he wasn't even oh, shit. what he is right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we really played a major role in that, just taking our time and developing the artists, the Jose Guapos, the Young mm -hmm. Book, um, Corny Cash, like just working with everybody who was just really doing something in the city at that time. Yeah. And, so, and a lot of them still are, you know, a lot of them have stepped up to OGs now and they just teaching the next artist how to do it. But, hmm. you know, yeah, really been around for a long time now. Yeah. And when you're songwriting, do you like sit down and write specifically for one artist in mind or do you just kind of write and then pitch it? Nah, like really, I like to have the artist present. OK, because I like to ask them three things about themselves. so I can incorporate it into the record to make the record more personal. Uh -huh. So, and then that, that way they actually feel it. They stand behind it. They want to push the record. They feel like they actually wrote the record versus just giving them something and the whole room likes it. So they like, okay, I'm going to try it out because the uh -huh. room like it. Hmm. But then they walk in the next room and one person don't like it. They, they like, man, I told them this wasn't it. <laughs> you know Have you saying? seen that happen before? Numerous times. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, you can't, you can't please every customer. If you could, there would be Macy's and JCPenney's. It would just be Macy's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like everybody going to want something different. Yeah. So. As a songwriter, how do you do, deal with rejections? Let's say if an artist doesn't like something that you had wrote for him, do you take it personal or do you just kind of keep it moving? And nah, you just, you really just keep it moving. Cause yeah. I mean, realistically, if you had the sauce, you wouldn't be in the room. Hmm. And the only thing I'm gonna do is raise the price when you come back. <laughs> so it's like, you know what I'm saying? You can, you can come right now and be like, nah, bro, this ain't it, bro. I'm, I'm looking for something else. And then as soon as your label called me or, you know, your manager called me or the PRs called me, it's like, yeah, man, I fought with him, but you know, I ain't, hey, man, I'm a whole different price right now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like when I was a kid, 14, 15 years old, running around, you getting $500 for a record, you thought you was rich. Huh. You know what I'm saying? It's 500 bu bucks, you know, over the long term, when the record drops, you're going to get 5,000. Hmm. So you think you really rich <laughs> at 16, 15 years old. But then now it's like, man, 5,000, what else you got? 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? Give me a chain for collateral. Is it real? Let me make sure it's real. <laughs> <laughs> I need something for, I need something for collateral. Yeah. And uh, have you written just for rappers or have you done R&B artists as well? I've definitely done R&B artists okay. too. Like, you know, I've worked with Flo Rida early on. I worked with Chris oh, Brown early on. Okay. Um, just had a chance to do some records with Ty Dolla Signs. That was really oh, cool. Shit. Yeah. So, you know, uh, he putting together some major things. Him, P&B and Rock and um, Jeremiah. I work okay. on a project right now, so I've been working with them as well. Yeah. So that's been that's been pretty cool because those people I, I, I'm influenced by, mm. I wouldn't particularly say I listen to them because I have this thing like if I write for an artist, I stop listening to them. Mm. Why is that? Because if I listen to, to how they deliver their melodies or how they come across within their music, I'll write what they're already doing. Okay. Yeah. Versus writing where they need to go. Uh. So I just stopped listening to them so I won't be influenced by what they already do or what notes I know they can hit. Like now it's like, let's push it. Hmm. Let's let's hit a higher note. Let's do a lower octave. Let's, you know, do a different cadence or different melody this time. Hmm. So I try not to listen to a lot of artists, you know, as I'm moving forward or writing for them or working with them. Yeah. And are artists kind of open to those new ideas when you pitch it to them? Or? No, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Like, you'd be surprised. Like, <clears throat> I've worked with so many different artists who... We got Nigerian records and oh, pop shit. records, and they're like, but they're like, man, my fans ain't gonna fuck with this shit, bro, because you know I'm a real street nigga. And I'm like, nigga, real street niggas travel too. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, you can't stay in the streets forever. Mm -hmm. You're not even really in the streets no more. You just from the streets. Yeah. So, I mean, really, it's past tense. You was a real street nigga. Now you just a nigga who's talking about the real streets. Hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's really levels to it, but. Like I said, it's a, it's really cool to watch it all come together when it do come together. Yeah. Sometimes the reference is harder than the record. I get that all the time. My PR Robin say that she's like, yo, G, you should have just kept that song. You shouldn't have gave them that. You huh. know what I'm saying? But sometimes it works and sometimes it's just, hey, they pay for it. Let them yeah. have it. Yeah. I can go make 20 records in one day. It's going to take them 20 hours to make one record. Hmm. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Is there one song that you've written that you can reveal that is, you are the most proud of? Mm. So I had a I had a, a hand in the uh, Lupe fiasco. He's working on his on his project. Hmm. Which one? Um, the lasers. Okay. Okay. So you know back then, like I was working out of Vision Studios. My boy kept telling me, like, yo, you know Kane beats in the back. Kane beats in the back. Hmm. Like, man, who the fuck is Kane beats, nigga? <laughs> and he's like, bro. Kane is in the building, nigga. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him. I know him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know tags back to that area. Yeah, you really exactly. know the producer's names. So he's like, yeah, he in the back, man. You know what I'm saying? He always he always be fucked up, man. You probably catch him out of the bathroom or something, drunk, taking a drunk piss or some shit. <laughs> I'm like, word? He's like, yeah. So it just so happened um, Soul Asylum had moved in and took up a lot of the space. And they had moved the vending machines a little closer by, by the restaurant. Hmm. So I was able to like kind of hang out, hope I was gonna run into him. Didn't even know he looked like at the time. Huh. Just ran into him. <laughs> I ended up running to his engineer first. Okay. D Boogie. And me and uh D Boogie really really connected. And like from connected with him, I got to see what he looked like from pictures, like in the being in this, in this actual studio. Hmm. So one day I ran into Kane, ran into Kane, like, yeah, man, you know what's going on? He like, bro, we in the bathroom, but I don't wanna talk to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but but we ended up running to each other again in the parking lot. LinkedIn, he let me come in and just like really, really work with him and hmm. like assist on a lot of the different records. But like that Lupe album really, really went crazy, really opened a lot of doors for me yeah. as far as like ASCAP, you know, different things were okay. concerned. They really shed some light on me when they started seeing, you know, oh, he's in here on the record yeah. some type of way. I don't know what his role was, but he's in here on the record. Hmm. So it really opened a lot of doors for me from there. And I, from there, I just went up. Okay. And do you work a lot with producers uh, hand to hand? Or so like I, I got a producer, Buggy Beats, who I <laughs> okay. signed. Yeah. Like on the management, you know, he was just someone I seen online. He was real talented and he got, he had a different bounce. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, and from, from there, I just took him and got him a whole bunch of placements. But after we started getting placements and started looking at how the record was coming out, it's like, man, we could have went hard on that beat than they did. Oh, shit. So. Me and him talked about it a couple of times. I'm going to start that rapping. He like, yeah, all right. But he never knew I was an artist. Really? He okay. only knew seen me on the business. He's like, yo, you know, I just seen you on Double XL with Bally Baby and doing deals and all mm -hmm. type of different things. Yeah. So like he never seen me as far as the actual artistry. It's just only been the business with him. Hmm. But when he heard me drop the records, he was like, yo, oh, you it. <laughs> so 
You know, I, I really been working with him the most. I work with a couple other producers too, but I really stay locked in with Buggy, like yeah, the ground up. Yeah, and it was just recently that you, uh, like you said, you mentioned uh, you stepped into the spotlight and became an artist yourself. What was the motivation behind that move? Um, people nowadays, everything has to be seen. Hmm. They don't believe anything that's heard, even if it's heard, even if you're hearing it from somebody who's actually experienced in it. Hmm. So it's like, you know, I watch artists nowadays, they'll go sign a shitty deal because they're about to give them a chain, a car, and some money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a partner who just signed for 175,000 five year, five album deal. They own 100%. God dang. Only thing he makes money off of is his show money. He gets 40% of that, and he still got a manager. Like, you don't even get the feature money. You go to a show, really? where a nigga gonna run up on you with 10 racks in his hand, like, bro, I need that verse right now to go to the studio. <laughs> but get what? Them 10 racks going straight to the label. God dang. Like, you don't get none of that. Huh. So, you know, it's like, just, just sitting back, I'm like, okay, listen, if someone doesn't be the Messiah, Jesus, and really lead them to the promised land like Moses, it's not <laughs> gonna happen. Like, they're gonna just keep, keep falling victim to him. And we live in Atlanta. Yeah. Like Atlanta is the worst place to be an artist. Hmm. Why is that? Like, if you're not really from Atlanta, you're not you're not gonna get in. Hmm. It's impossible. Hmm. Like you're gonna on the people who do get in, who come here and move from other cities and states, they get in because they gang bang, hmm. or they got family who got a history here prior to them coming here. So the name already means something before they even get here. Hmm. But as far as just raw talent, it doesn't happen. Hmm. Like I've seen so much raw talent. You can go to the union, you can go all over Atlanta, so much raw talent, but raw talent doesn't make it here. Hmm. It's all about perception and perception trumps reality here. Hmm. So it's like, if they look like something, there's something. <laughs> like, you know, future's the GOAT, you know what I'm saying? And he has a lot of artists, Thug's the GOAT. He has a lot of artists, but what artists can you say you physically seen just break hmm. repeatedly with the same formula? Hmm. Doesn't work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but but the but the perception is so big that they're gonna pay them to come to 11:45. Yeah. They're gonna pay them to come over here to this this strip club and that strip club. They're gonna pay them for all these runs. So you're gonna keep seeing them every night, every night, every night because the perception is they have money. They're gonna fuck up a check when they get here. They're gonna buy out the bottles. They're gonna buy out the sections. And it's the total opposite. Hmm. When you book them, they're gonna send you that rider. They want five bottles comp. They want $3,000 in ones, house money to throw while they're there if they're in a strip club. They want a section. They want six hookahs for all the girls they're gonna have coming to the section. <clears throat> and it's just like, realistically, it's all perception. You know, food, I food of mind. So Atlanta's like one of the worst places, I think, as far as the music. Like, we don't actually have talent here. Like when I go to LA, I can walk in a club and be dancing right next to Taylor Swift uh. and not know it because there is no real hierarchy. There is no VIPs and non VIPs. It's just, we're all here for a good time. Mm. Or you can hear a new artist break, like, you know, and then they still make it back to the East Coast and we accept them. Mm. But as far as the East Coast going to the West Coast, it's like, yo, I gotta check his resume. Who this nigga, who this nigga with? Who he from? What he bang? Uh. What's set here? What's set? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, music has gotten so washed down now that I understand the business aspect of it. And I got back into it because I realized that with the business I know and the information I know, I can move around all this shit. Hmm. Without having to gang bang, without having to click yeah. up, without having to sign to no nigga in the beginning, I could just move how I want to move and get the results I want to get. Hmm. And we're definitely getting them. Yeah. Like, you know, we've been out three weeks now. We're already over 1.6 million streams collectively. Oh, hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just on Spotify alone, we're at over 50,000 monthly listeners. Hmm. So it's like, we're doing more numbers than the guys who have the perception. Yeah. And the numbers is what's winning. The numbers is what got the labels calling my phone at two, three o'clock in the morning because <laughs> they're in LA and I'm in Atlanta. And they're three hours behind us, but they're like, oh, I'm sorry to wake you, man, but why I got you up? Let me talk to you real fast. <laughs> it's like, you wasn't starting to wake me. You knew what time it was. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's been a pretty smooth transition for you coming back to as being an artist from songwriting. It's been a smooth as far as the business, but the relationships have all burnt. Really? Like, like all the artists I was writing for, all the people we was putting on, hmm. all the artists we were sending beats to and beat packs, 
they feel some type of way right now. Hmm. Like, you know, I reach out to other producers sometimes if I want a different sound, and some of them might reach back. Some of them might, like, man, bro, you tripping, bro. You ain't, you ain't taking this shit serious, man. You ain't, you ain't gonna do this shit long. You ain't gonna do this shit for about two months. <laughs> you gonna make enough money, you gonna sit down. Hmm. And it's like, bro, it's not even about the money. I would have signed if it was about the money. Yeah. Like, it's really just, just the fact of, like, yo, I really wanna give some real content. Hmm. And I wanna give those records that the artists pass on. They're like, I don't know, bro, that ain't it. That ain't it, that ain't it. Hmm. Cause you know, working with Neo years ago, he always told me, until you do it, they're gonna always ask you how you how you know you ain't never did it before. Hmm. So it's like he had those records like sad, and they was like, yo, this song is so simplistic. It's never gonna do anything. Hmm. Because I'm so sick of love songs. Like it's just simple, simple melodies, but the simplicity carried him further than the complexity that everybody was dropping at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he ended up going number one off them records. Now he's sitting back, and now he went from getting fifteen thousand to write a song to you got to pay one hundred fifty thousand to sit down with him. <laughs> like his time is the money now. Yeah. yeah. Before you even get to the eight hundred thousand dollar budget <laughs> for him to work on the project, he want one fifty just to sit down. So you're gonna pay a whole M. Yeah. Just to get a project from him. Yeah. So that's the level you want really want to be at if you're gonna be behind the scenes. You want to make sure you're actually getting the value of what you're worth. And not just what they're telling you your work. And I know, like, you know, I offend a lot of my friends when I drop projects without telling them, like, yo, I'm gonna drop. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's like, yo, I gave you guys opportunity. I gave y'all the wave. I gave y'all the music. I gave you the lyrics, the producer. I gave y'all the free studio time, everything. Mm-hmm. Like, what more did you need? Mm-hmm. And like, things are so digital right now. You can put one thing out on, on the internet and it can go viral. Oh, yeah. If you're actually pushing it. Yeah. But then, you know. Yeah. They're really upset, but we're going to keep applying pressure, though. Keep going. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about this de- debut project you just dropped, uh, 33. 33. Um, you released this on your birthday in December, right? 12-12. 12-12. 90 t- babies. Yeah. What can you tell us about this project? Oh, uh, man, this, this one was real personal to me. Like, like I released it on 12-12. So I made, a, I made a 12-12 commitment, like, across the board, which was I would do 12 songs on my birthday and a bonus record. Then I was like, yo, you know what? I'm going to just keep the 12-12 theme. I'm going to do 12 songs for the next 12 months on the 12th of every month. Oh, shit. Plus one bonus. So, I mean, the numbers have really been coming in as a result of really just dropping the music. But it's about consistency. And the attention span is so short right now where you could drop something, but when they don't hear from you, they go find another artist. Hmm who sounds similar to you. Like, you know, a good example of that would be Rollo Rodriguez. Like, yo, he hard as fuck, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But he don't consistently like just keep dropping, dropping, dropping. So then you got the no cap hmm. who who comes back sounding similar to him. Cause I didn't, I couldn't even tell the difference at first. <laughs> I didn't know who was who. <laughs> it was like, oh, that's a nigga from Alabama. I'm like, oh, you talking about Rollo? They're like, nah, he capping. I'm like, he capping, they like, Oh yeah, yeah, he ain't doing no cap. That's his name, no cap. Back in town, like he, like it was just so crazy. Yeah. I didn't know who was who. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that just goes to show that, like, yo, people will get in with your same wave, and you gotta realize, like, yo, once you break, you become a leader of the pack, mm-hmm. and everybody who's following you wants to be the leader. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you look at what Lucci did for Atlanta with the melodic sound, yeah. and then he went down to only doing one album a year, and then you go look at Young Blue, hmm. who has the same sound, but he's dropping four and five albums a year. Mm-hmm. Who's gonna win? Mm-hmm. Person with the consistency. Yeah. Now we got Rod Wave, he's, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah. out here now, he's going mm-hmm. crazy, you know what I'm saying? But he's dropping so much content too. Yeah. So it's like, yo, if you wanna keep their attention, you gotta consistently give them something to keep their attention. Yeah. It's like, you know, having a restaurant, you got to add something new to the menu all the time. Hmm. Or the clubs might say under new ownership when it's the same ownership. But it just makes you want to come because something's, something's new. Hmm. So it's like, yo, when it, when it came to 33, I really just wanted to give new music, new sound, be true to myself, and just really give, give like, authentic, like authentic pain because I feel like, you know, everybody's just lying in their raps right now. Hmm. And, you know, because I'm writing this shit, I might as well just say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck, so fuck writing. We're going to just say it. Now we're going to let them know what's really going on. Let them see it for what it really is. And, you know, 33, like it stands for the scripture, Deuteronomy 33, which is, 
I'll restore you in front of nations where I scattered you and everything you lost should be restored. So, you know, like I feel like all the time I lost, all the opportunities I gave away, all the people I helped along the way who didn't turn around and do the same in return, I got all that back. And I'm seeing it not only through the, the reactions of the people, but the numbers. Yeah. The numbers are going up faster than I can even count them. Hmm. Hmm. That's a good problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, for real. So it's like, you know, it's a blessing to really be in this space where, you know, you you see for the first time, like, yo, you were worth more than what they were giving you. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one of the singles on there was Life Lessons. Uh, Life Lessons. Chili Chills. Chili Chills, my boy, man, Mechanicsville, man, Devil R, man, Radical Rich, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, you know, that's that's a that's a real one, man. It's crazy, yo. Like, maybe like five, six years ago when I was trying to rap, I reached out to Chili Chills. He was the hottest in the city. It's when Kanye tried to come snatch him up. Uh, yeah. And like, you know, Andre Three Stacks, they were saying he the next me and everybody was going mm. crazy over him. And I was like, yo, man, let's work. He's like, yeah, man, we're going to work. We, work. <laughs> we never worked. You know what I'm saying? Worked until, <laughs> never worked. Like, until recently, huh? Until recently. He's like, yeah, huh. we're going to work. We're going to work. Then one night, man, I'm trying, I go to Walmart. It's like four o'clock in the morning. Go to Walmart, run into Chili Chili, like, man, what the hell you doing out here? We ain't throwing, we ain't throwing roll. Like, we, we oh, yeah. said we're not even supposed to be with me in Cobb County. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm on throwing roll. He's like, yeah, man, what the hell you doing out here? I'm like, what the hell you doing out here? I'm out here, you know, just getting some shit, man. It's the only motherfucker that's open at 20 hours close to the city. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not like, for the same reason. We exchanged numbers. Man, he hit me back the same night and pushed up on me mm. just to come check the studio out. He came and heard the sound and the new music. He like, yo, bro, you hard. Now you ready. Mm. All right, let's work, pull something up. Yeah, we just pulled some up and went in, and, it, and it, you know, like lessons came out. That was one of the first ones. And my PR Robin was like, "Yo, you got to push this. Hmm. This one's gonna go." Yeah. yeah. Who produced that one? Um, Buggy did. Buggy did one. Okay, that's what's up, man. And you also worked with uh, Tokyo Jets on uh, Cinderella. Yeah, man, that's crazy, yo. <laughs> Cinderella's actually two years old. Really? Like for real, for real. Record's two years old. Like I was. It, it really dropped like it like it had the, at the height of that whole no problems record she had out. Okay, yeah. Did it then? And then my people was like, nah, bro, like she bashing niggas. Like niggas ain't gonna fuck with this record right now because <laughs> she out here bashing niggas and you got a song talking about love and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't wanna fall in love again, da da da. And then it's like, yo, as growth happens over time, she ended up finding her someone, they got a child. I was like, okay, now it's time to drop this record. Huh. Cause now she represents family. Yeah, yeah. And because I stand behind family first. Okay, it's the perfect time to drop it. Hmm. So that's why I dropped that record. That's what's up. Yeah, it turned out really dope too. Appreciate it. Um, did you have a personal favorite song on this project? Um, it was pacing, but hmm. sinking was it? Like sinking was the record for me. It's the bonus record though. Hmm. But sinking was the one because with sinking it was like yo, it was the first time I had the opportunity to, to like to fully vent. It was that moment where I woke up like, yo, these niggas ain't gonna support it. I don't even care. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to take on so much water that I sink my whole shit myself. Hmm. Trying to give them a boat to stay on so they can stay afloat. Like, if they feel like what they got better, let them, let them have it. Hmm. And I did. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and so sinking is my favorite. Yeah. Of that project. Yeah. That's what's up, man. All right. Um, you also manage Buggy Beats like we talked about. For sure. So how'd you come across them? The internet, man. The internet's crazy. Yeah. Huh. Cash Money AP had posted, like, he had um, did a collab with Cash Money AP. Buggy posted in his story. He mentioned Cash Money. Cash Money shared it. I had DM Cash Money like, yo, what's up with the little nigga right here? He like, I don't know, man. He just paid me for a collab. <laughs> I'm like, he hard, though. He like... Man, it's gonna be a lot of them that's gonna be hard. You know what I'm saying? We collab, so of course it'd be gonna be hard. I'm like, I'm gonna go check him out. So I wanna go check him out. Like, yo, you know, let me take you out. And um, I told him, just send me a pack. Like, send me something, you know, a little bit of everything, like like, like a little sample of Trey. Hmm. Let me get a little melodic, a little trap, a little what you feel like is your actual signature sound, whatever, whatever. So he sent me a pack. And he ended up sending me a song that um, I believe it's on this, Upcoming project. I'm like, I'm like six or seven projects ahead, so I don't even know what it is. Oh, but I got a song that's gonna come out soon. It's called Slim Duncan. Oh, and he had actually made the beat for the record. Hmm. And it took me to a real emotional place. Like, hmm. and I really was gonna drop this project on 820 on Dunk's birthday. Okay. 
But I didn't drop it. I, I waited. Hmm. And um, yeah, like 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 the record he produced, and after that, I was like, yo, I gotta I gotta I gotta work with him. Like like the industry needs this sound. Hmm. I know a lot of artists I'm writing for at the time who could use this sound. So instead of just calling him, calling him, calling him, and just getting him to try to push up, because you know he's I mean, from he's from Carlsville, Georgia. Okay. So it's like instead of trying to get him, call him, get him to push up, I'm gonna just lock in with him, hmm. and I'm gonna get these records placed for him. So the first couple plays, I just did on the strength, like yo, I'm just trying to show you what I could do. And he like, bro, I fuck with you, bro. You believe in me? Let's go. Let's 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 turn up. And we never looked back since then. Yeah, yeah. See the first producer that you managed? Um, no, nah, I managed some producers before that. Okay. I used to work with like Sweat the Track. They made a lot of records for like Jackie O and hmm. um, Money Bag Yo. You know they from Memphis, so I, I worked with them for a while. Uh, I worked with ILDK, Icing on the Cake. Okay. So you know they they real hard too. Like you know they. Got some records out, Collision, the Gold Mine record. They got they got some heat out here right now. So I mean, it's a lot, a lot of producers I work with, but as far as locked in like contractually, yeah. he was the first one. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. All right. Well, so are you still songwriting right now? Or are you focused? Oh yeah, no, on I'm the... definitely songwriting. Them bills okay. gotta get paid, man. You know, so I got kids to take care of. Not all my kids, though. I got other kids to take care of too. So you know, bills gotta get paid. Definitely gotta keep writing. You know what I'm saying? And it's a blessing to be able to do them both. Yeah. Have the time to do them both, but. I got an in-home studio, so like hmm. I just recorded the house all day, every day, and just post up on my story. One of the artists I write for, be like, bro, I need that. I need that check. Come on with it. It's yours. You can have it right now. Yeah. So, you know, I definitely stay in the studio all day, every day. Yeah. So how do you balance songwriting, being your own artist, managing a producer now? Does it get a little hectic? I mean, it really doesn't get it hasn't got bad yet. I just okay. feel like I feel like as as the progression happens more on the artistry. I'm gonna have to get somebody in the middle, middle so they can't talk to me about Buggy and then like, oh shit, this willpower. Oh shit, hmm. bro, I need you too. Like, hmm. I can't have any of that going on. <laughs> so I'll get somebody in the middle who, you know, you know, relay, be, be the point of contact. But as of right now, I really can balance it all out though. Like, you know, I asked for it, I wanted it. So of course, I said, we'll come with it. Yeah, yeah. Now that's what's up, man. Just stay busy, you know? Ain't nothing wrong Got with to. that. Yeah. So, um, Next project, January 12th, it's right around January the corner. January 12th, new album is called Eight. Okay. Eight rep- now I'm not, I'm not sticking with the numbers thing. <laughs> I think it's my last one, it's gonna be a number cause I don't want to be so thrown off with numbers. <laughs> but this one's called Eight because you know, seven in the Bible represents the number of completion. Hmm. So eight represents new beginnings. Okay. So we're going into a new year, this is a new beginning, new start. The numbers are up, everything's crazy. Like everything's new right now. Hmm. So I just felt like eight was, Definitely where it should be, but eight drops um, January 12th. And then I think February 12th, I'm either going to drop Blood, Sweat, and Blessings or Soul to Soul. Oh, but you know, one of them, they'll, they'll come right at each other though, either way. Yeah. So yeah. that's. It. So how will this new one, eight, differ from uh, 33? Um, I think 33, I gave them more what, what the people wanted hmm. to hear versus more than what I wanted to show. Okay. Now I'm giving them more of the emotional, like I'm really explaining things I didn't explain. Like I got a record on there called uh, Freedom. Uh, I'll let you check the video out too while we're here. But I got a record called Freedom and on Freedom, I'm talking about um, my tattoo on my face, the Freedom tattoo, the Long Live Kevin. Okay. And it's talking about like, you know, just what I went through to even get to that point. Like, you know, 2015, I went to my first coma for 91 days. So I found I had diabetes, type 1 diabetic. I was actually born with it. But because as children, you know the symptoms because the symptoms are so regular, like constant thirst, tiredness. You're a child. You're going to be thirsty from running outside all day because your mama's saying, stay your ass in and stay out. <laughs> and then you're going to be tired from playing yourself to sleep, as, as, as the parents always say. Hmm. So I found out I had diabetes. My cousin was dealing with a battle too, his own separate battle. And we made a pact we wasn't going to commit suicide. Hmm. Some things ended up happening later on, and he did commit suicide. Hmm. And when he committed it, it hit me so hard, that, like I was stuck. Hmm. So because we made a pact we wasn't gonna do, we was in this together. When he committed suicide, I still felt like we was in this together. Hmm. So I ended up going to his graveyard one night, asking him like, yo, like if you still with me, like, you know what I'm saying? Show me something, like, show me you still here. Um, had a 40 on me, loaded up, full clip, put one in the head, put it to my head, close my eyes, pull the trigger a couple of times, it didn't go off, it jammed. Huh. So I'm like, bro, this effing in this bitch is not supposed to jam. 
You know what I'm saying? I pointed at the ground, I pulled the trigger, went off instantly. Oh shit. So I knew it was the sign, like, hold on, what's going on? So, so I'm kind of like tripped out. As I'm trying to move, my whole left side of my body wouldn't move. Like I was kind of like um, having a stroke or something. Like the whole left side wouldn't move. And I, I had like a spider web right here on my arm. So I felt like that was Kevin because Kevin was left-handed. So I felt like that was him like mm. grabbing me instantly on my left side, let him know like, I'm your left side. Mm. Like as long as you stay right, I got you on the left. When things go left, you know what I'm saying? So I ended up, you know, being able to move past it. A couple of days later, I went to tattoo shop and tattoo freedom, long live Kevin, because I was, it was the freedom I needed to get through everything and make it through all of this. So that was one of the reasons why I was like, yo, you know, it's really time. Like, I had to go back to a place. I mean, I still battle, battle, battle with him not being here, yeah. but I had to think about when was the last time I was genuinely happy. Hmm. And it's like, when I get in that studio and I make that music, hmm. but I remember making music and sending him the music. And he'd be like, yeah, cuz you're going, but you ain't putting up pain in here. I can't feel it. Hmm. I hear what you're saying. You're saying some shit. I don't give a fuck what a nigga saying. I want to feel this shit. Hmm. But I'm going to play it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why eight and, and moving forward, like soul to soul and blessed with and blessings, you're going to really get the pain. Not like glamorizing the pain, but you're going to really feel what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, and on this project, I got, you know, Freedom is on um, eight that drops on the 12th. But Freedom is like one of that first projects where I really just got to openly like express it. And it took a lot, like hmm. even the video, I shot the video at, you know, at, at his graveyard, at the oh, gravesite. Wow. Huh. So I'm trying not to cry like while I'm shooting the video yeah. and I'm reenacting what really took place. Oh, so it resonates more the second time. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally at the video shoot had to take the clip out the pistol because I was so fucked up, even trying to like act it out where I could feel myself like at that moment. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's really, like, like I said, it's really a blessing to be able to get through what I got through and still be here to talk about it, live through it. And it's folks really going through it. They ain't talking about it, but they really going through it. Yeah. Like no for sure, for sure. Like you would be surprised how many folks DM me about suicide and hmm. all type of shit. And I don't got the answers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't give you the answers for your life, but only thing I can tell you is, what works for me and how it's still working for me because it's an everyday everyday journey. Like I'm diabetic, I'm sticking myself 16 times a day. Hmm. I can't even move around how I wanna move around. So it's like, it's gonna be 10 times worse. Like I always see Boosie, you know, he says every time he before he get ready to go on tour, he go get the IV. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. So my mom just found me a little spot where I can get my IVs now where I can hmm. just pay for them out of pocket, get an IV before I can move around. Yeah. To really be able to continue to keep moving. Hmm. Yeah. But it's it's a it's definitely a hard battle, harder than what people think it is. It ain't just no, oh, you ain't supposed to have that. Hmm. Like it's more than one type. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like, it's really, it's really, it's really a, a never ending battle. Yeah. I feel like you're gonna fight it to the to the end. And I feel like when you really got something that uh the devil really won't, he's gonna be at you harder than anybody else. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the way I'm touching the people, like with the influence. He want that for himself. I know he want to test the people too. So, you know, yeah. he going to be on me 10 times harder than he going to be on anybody else. Yeah. And what does it mean to you when people reach out to you and tell you that they relate to this or they kind of going through the same things? Now nah, I feel it though. Cause it's like, yo, what if my record was the one, what's the thing that, that they heard that saved them? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it was just certain things we hear or see or feel that makes you question it. Like, Logic has that uh, suicide song where he's giving the telephone number for the suicide hotline. Yeah. Didn't know that's what the number was. <laughs> I thought he was pulling a Mike Jones on us. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I, mean? I didn't know what was going on at first. <clears throat> but, but like that first verse, like, you know, when he was rapping about it, like, I don't want to be alive. Like, mm -hmm. I felt that through the music. Hmm. So it's like, when I hear people telling me they feeling what I'm saying, I know they feel like how I felt when I first heard that song. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's and you could touch one person, like, yeah, you saved. Yeah. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna get everybody. You can't please everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you could touch one, and that one save another one, mm -hmm. you end up saving 10. Your one life will save 10. So that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a blessing. Like I am thankful for the ones who do reach out, you know. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how I can save people on a global scale. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not trying to be, you know. Jesus or nothing, but I'm just saying like, I real, real deal want to figure out how we could just, even if it's just a group chat 
and people just going through and they can hit a group chat with real people, not yeah. like no, oh yeah, what's going on? What's your symptoms? <clears throat> well, you should go to your local hospital. I'm gonna give them a call and tell them you're coming in. Like they're gonna put you in a crazy house. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not that. It's a group chat. Like, yo, I'm going through some shit. You know what I'm saying? It's anybody in my area type. Can I just wanna have a conversation? Hmm. And just something simple like that. But I'm, I'm gonna put it together. I'm gonna figure out how to make it work. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Well, and uh, going back to the Project 8, um, you gonna have any guest features on there? And what producers have you worked with on this one? Um, on 8, I have Beat Muster Mark. Okay. Jay Casperson. And Buggy made nine out of the 13 records. So oh, wow. <laughs> Keep stick with the formula, right? Yeah, stick with the formula. You know, so I, don't, I don't differentiate too much. Yeah. But that's it. Oh, wait, I have um oh I got I got Tommy and I got this dude named Sam, man. Sam is going crazy too. Hmm. And Jimmy Lickens, they they all they all uh, co-produced records, but hmm. yeah, they're going crazy. Sam is he's in Australia. Or Jay Casperson, he's in Denmark. But he made a lot of Lucy. So you know they So been, you're going global. Yeah, no, for for real. Like you really want to expand your brand, like yeah. I don't want to just hit the local Atlanta producers. Mm -hmm. They they in Atlanta. I'm gonna always see them. Yeah. I want to do something bigger than that. Yeah. And and try to get a bigger reach. I feel like that's why the numbers are doing what they're doing now because of that. Yeah. So and then features. Um who do I have on here? I think I only got two features on the whole project. Hmm. Um oh my, oh my my boy Young. Like my boy Young on the project and my, my boy Nico. That's it. Okay. I mean, I'm like, like right now where I'm at, as I'm starting to see the progression and how people are coming in, I don't want to use the whole, oh, you only own because you got a song with such and such. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or they're like, oh, you know, Willpower, he got that song with Tokyo Jets. No, Tokyo <laughs> Jets got that song with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we can just together, man. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't, don't belittle me. You know what I mean? So, not for sure. Though. I'm trying to really fall back on the features, though. Okay. Yeah, just focus on really, really getting out because features be your comfort zone too. Like, mm. okay, man, I went hard. Let me let somebody else get a shot. <laughs> yeah, like, nah, fuck it. You went hard. Go harder. Yeah, yeah. So, challenge yourself. Push challenge yourself. yourself. Yeah. You know, my my boy Young, I was telling him, like, bro, take your time, bro. Like, go to another song and come back to it. Mm. So I go to another one and come back to it. Yeah. All right. What's some your goals for 2020, Will? Uh goals for 2020. Um, really just touch everything that I say I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be a birthday bash this year. Okay. For sure, it's 2020. If I can't hit birthday bash 2020, <laughs> I shouldn't be at none of the bashes. <laughs> so my goal is to be at birthday bash 2020. Um, and I just want to be like, like the artists who people actually can get a personal relationship with hmm. without actually being too accessible. Hmm. Like, you're going to be able to reach out and physically touch me but I want to be able to like, yo, when you comment on an Instagram post, whether it takes me three months, four months, five months, I want to be able to get back to that comment. So y'all appreciate you. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of artists lose the people and you can see it even in the numbers. Like you may see a person with 1.3 million followers, 410,000 likes, but then they only got 1900 comments. Hmm. And then you go back six months prior when they broke and they had 29,000 comments, sure, yeah. 49, 59,000 comments. So it's like, yo, you start losing the people when the people feel like you don't even notice I'm here. Yeah. And you start seeing the, the sales decline too. And it's like, yo, as an independent artist, you get you 10,000 people who like, your, who like your music and support you. They pay $10 for your album. You just made $100,000 like. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, the numbers is really, Smaller than people think it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So that's how, that's what I really be looking at, like the numbers. And I realize that all this is numbers. Hmm. Nothing is even what it used to be as far as promo and grinding and working. It's just all numbers. And I want to make sure that, yo, numbers keep climbing. I'm not setting any real goals for myself. You know what I'm saying? Because I already feel like what's for me is for me. Hmm. Like I just got to reach out and look, touch it and do the work. Yeah. Outside of that, I ain't really setting no goals, but. I just want to make sure that like I really stay in tune with the people because it's the people who work regular jobs who support what I, my brand and your brand. It's the ones who paying for YouTube Red yeah. that's watching us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the ones that we really want to stay in tune with. So I'm not saying what they say is going to be right 100% of the time. 
but I definitely want to hear what they're saying. And if you got a hundred people swaying the same way, like, yo, you're too sad, let's bring more life into the music. I don't want to depress them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you got a hundred people saying, I need this, hmm. and you got three saying you're too sad, well, y'all don't need this, but they do. Hmm. So I got to give it to them because they need it. Yeah. Well, so that's how I'm keep moving forward this year. Yeah. All right, Will, anything else you want to add? Man, I appreciate you jumping off the porch yeah. with DGB is willpower. Can't count me out everywhere. <laughs>